This is Kevin at Pope with the Pope's Perspective and my 30 Days of Disney. And today we are waking up because we are talking about Sleeping Beauty. So, um, so in essence, the story of Sleeping Beauty is actually a pretty simple story. So, a princess is born, they have a whole celebration of the birth of the princess, everyone in the kingdom was invited, all of the fairies were invited except Maleficent. All were invited except Maleficent. Maleficent was not so happy that she was not invited. So she comes anyway, and she places her own gift. The three fairies all come and offer gifts to the child. The gift of beauty, the gift of song. But before Meriwether can bestow her gift, Maleficent shows up, and she says, I too have a gift. I, and she gifts her that the child on her 16th birthday, she shall prick her finger on the spinning wheel and die. Wow, that's pretty dark. Fortunately, Meriwether had not given her gift, so her gift becomes that if this curse comes true and she does prick her finger, then she will not die, but she will be put into a sleep until true love comes and awakens her with a kiss. So, hence Sleeping Beauty. But the king is still worried, so he has all the spinning wheels in the kingdom burned, and the three good fairies end up raising the child so that Maleficent cannot find her. The other thing that this it doesn't get talked about a lot, but really, like, Sleeping Beauty was the first Disney film that got a prince that started to have a personality that actually did something, okay? Because Cinderella's prince, she just went to the ball and he was there and they fell in love. Snow White's prince, he didn't do much either. He, he comes, he sings, he leaves, he comes back and kisses her. Not very interesting. So, Philip he ends up going out in the woods, he sees this girl who's singing, he's intrigued by her, he ends up dancing with her, and they sing the whole song like, oh, we've met before, once upon a dream. Now I've been thinking about this. So, the whole thing with Princess Aurora and Prince Philip, okay? A lot of people are like, oh, well, it's just love at first sight, and they love it, they, they, they fall in love, and one day they end up together, happily ever after, bad storyline, but I'm like, okay, so maybe I'm not for, like, the love at first sight, but however, like, looking at the film again, I'm like, you know what, if neither of them were royalty, and they had met, they would have gone into a regular courtship, and their relationship would have developed. And they would have seen if they were right for... So, now, since they were royalty, it was kind of like they, they ended up getting together much faster, and it sped things along. But there was like... That, that first meeting started to trigger something that was beginning to develop. So, I think there was a little bit more with Aurora and Prince Philip. Okay? You can have your arguments on it. You can, you can have your arguments on the, oh, it's another love at first sight, one day meeting. Okay, I get it. But I do see, like, it did start from, like, this is the beginning of their relationship. Okay? It just, it sped it up because they were royalty. It was an interesting thought. I never thought of it before. Okay? Also, the three fairies, I love their personalities. Each... Each one has a distinct personality. They're so different. You can t you know which one is which. I mean, Meriwether's my favorite. She, she's so feisty and she speaks her mind and I love Meriwether. Fauna's the sweet one. Flora is the really the self-proclaimed leader. She's very she just she takes charge and she's like, "This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it and this is how it's done." Much to Meriwether's dismay most of the time and so and then of course you have the whole when they're making the dress and the birthday cake and all of that and they're using the magic which they haven't used the magic for years 
Okay, it's like, nope, we cannot use the magic. Maleficent cannot find us. They try to do all of this on their own and it doesn't work. And now they're using the magic, which I'm actually, this might be a little bit of flaw. I'm like, how did they survive all of those years without magic? If like 16 years and they haven't used, used magic and then this one day they're trying to do things without magic and it's not working so like how did they adapt in other ways i'm like what did they eat like uh, like did they cook or i don't know maybe they cheated but they didn't tell each other i think i'm gonna like say like that's a secret plot like they cheated like when they cooked they never cooked together and they probably cheated and just used a little bit of magic for cooking um Maybe they put things in the fire and one of them like just kind of sneakily with the like, tsk. I don't know. Of course the ones were hidden away so maybe they didn't, but I don't know. That's kind of an interesting theory. But you know what? It's It doesn't take away from the fun of this and like the whole, the dress. Laura wants it pink, Meriwether wants it blue and they constantly change it back. Make it pink, <gasps> no, blue, make it blue. No pink make it pink and it's like back and forth and they get in this hole and it's just it's a kick to watch i mean these people are they're always bickering they're always okay and then of course the iconic dress changing at the end while they're dancing and it's just it's a beautiful film and um the scenery i mean this is like the landscapes in this film are just gorgeous like this film this was Disney's first animated film. They actually animated it in the widescreen format. Okay, so most of the animated films were done in the full frame format. They didn't do the wider scope, the cinema scope, wide frames, because um, they had to draw that. And this film, like Walt Disney wanted to try it, and he did that. Um, and it just, it works in this film. It's, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, of course, you cannot talk about Sleeping Beauty and not talk about Maleficent. What a presence. Like, uh, you, who, you don't want to mess with Maleficent, okay? She's not invited to a party and she curses a baby. Ooh. Yeah, she's... So, and like, and she's like, she's like set on making sure this curse is fulfilled in 16 years. I'm like, I wonder why it's 16. I mean, maybe she's bound by rules. Maybe this, the curse that she's used has to be at 16. I don't know. But she knows that the curse is going to be fulfilled by in 16 years. And she wants to see to it that it's fulfilled. The curse says by your 16th birthday. So maybe it could have happened before then. I mean, obviously, she's got her little minions, her little demon kind of pig creatures going out looking for it. It's like, we searched everywhere, and oh, the cradles. And of course, they've been looking for a baby for 16 years, and Maleficent was not happy about that either. And would you be? It's like, you, you idiots, you, it's like, she's gonna grow up, you idiots, you're just like, but they're just thinking like, gotta find the baby, gotta find the baby. 16 years, they're trying to find a baby. So, so, I guess those, that first couple years, that's where the, the fairies had to be very careful and not to be found. And then, and then after that, then they didn't, they probably were still careful, but they had to be, but they didn't have to be as careful because their minions are still looking for a baby and they're not going to find the baby. So, um, but it's actually, it's actually believable that these minions are just not the, not the brightest, okay? They're probably at her tower most of the time or going off doing her bidding. They're not with most society. They don't think about babies and babies growing up. And, um, so, but... But Maleficent, and then that dragon at the end, the, the fight with Prince Philip, I mean, it's just, it's epic, and it's exciting, and it, it just, this Sleeping Beauty is just, it's beautiful, and then not to mention the, the score, which intertwined Tchaikovsky's ballet of Sleeping Beauty, which has become synonymous with Sleeping Beauty. Like you hear the ballet of Sleeping Beauty, you hear that music and maybe you don't think of the ballet, but you think of Sleeping Beauty. And a lot of that is 
probably to do with Disney as well, but it works. It fits in so well. Okay, the animated film feels like the music was written for the film. And there was stuff that was written for the film. Okay, most of it was the the ballet stuff, but they did put in some other, and it blended very well. It's just, it's a fantastic film. It is, it still holds up, and Maleficent has gone down as one of the greatest Disney villains, and for good reason. I mean, I love her. She's, she's great. I love, she's such a fun villain to watch. I, I love the subtlety villains, the ones that are very subtle. But then there's moments where she gets boisterous and is very unhappy, and it the character works. She absolutely works. Sleeping Beauty, fantastic Disney film. And that is the Pope's perspective. Next off, we're going to be going off into another reawakening of Disney. So. All of you that know your Disney history should know the films I'm talking about.